surprising and hard to understand the children at first because their voices have changed so much. They're much bigger. Mark's in high school now. The girls are in the latter stages of Midland's primary school. We began to think about going back to the United States again. I wonder what we would sing if we had to sing another song. What should we sing? Did you say what month it is? July the yeah, Mark didn't say what month it was. Didn't he? No, no it's it July, month. middle of it's winter time. Up, it's like spring in Colorado. Which is why Mommy's in bed on Sunday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> that After all? working myself to death all no. day yesterday and all morning mm-hmm. today. Yes, dear. Doesn't matter. Shall we sing a song to end this? But let's record Anita's and Eve's and finishes it there. And they're Sing a song. Come on, sing a song. No, what should I say? Two 
large black leather chairs. There are also two settees, and one is covered at present with a pair of impala hides, red russet brown on the back, tan on the sides, and white on their bellies. There are also two Tommy gazelle skins with the similar colors and a prominent black stripe. This, of course, means that our trophies have finally arrived from Africa a year and a half after our visit to Kenya and Tanzania in 1974. There are large double doors from the living room to the dining room. And on either side are hung our beautiful bush buck and the Grant's gazelle that you have seen a picture of. Looking through the double doors into the dining room, there is an oval table with a white Filipino tablecloth and six large bells. This means, of course, that July has passed, and winter is over, and spring has come to Western Australia. On the wall, above the fireplace in the dining room, are a pair of impalas on a single shield, the lower one looking left in a sneak mount, and the upper one attentively looking over him, as we saw them in Kenya. On the mantle are a collection of purple bottles from the gold fields of Western Australia. And the bookshelves are colored by the orange binders of pelican books, blue of, of penguin books, and a large number of yellow National Geographics that we love so well. There is an old English clock on the wall above the dining room table, a painting of a gathering of people by Monet.
Okay. And here comes the green dink. Tickets, the superintendent gave a very plain 
Spontaneous production in honor of our bicentenary year. Anita?
that's well, great. That's, <laughs> that's really that was great. A, we promised not to sing, but we couldn't help ourselves. <laughs> I wrote this this morning while watching and looking at the mount. He was old, his progeny secure. Now I can study him from every angle, learn the lessons of his permanent curves, how well he is mounted. The arch of his neck complements the sweep of his horns in both length and grace. If his horns were any longer, they would destroy this grace and character and make him a freak of sorts. He stands perfect to my eye, Created by evolutionary artisans, a bullet and a taxidermist who knew and loved his race. Should his bones be savage and scattered and bleached, now disintegrating on the plain? How many more people can now love him, honor and protect his race? Now Anita would like to play... La Gracieuse. 